Well, phase two of the government's measured plan for reopening the economy includes resuming worship services, but that's with strict social distancing protocols and wearing masks. Prime Minister, the most honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis said in his exclusive interview with our news team this week that he is looking forward to that. I believe there are different components of healing. There's healing, as we know, in terms of health, there's economic healing, but most importantly, there's spiritual healing. And um, I would um, like to see the churches open as quickly as possible, but I'm guided by the health professionals. I'm in discussion with the health professionals because if the certain family islands have been liberated or freed, then the question should be asked, why, why shouldn't the church likewise um, be included in that? So I'm in discussion with that. And um, uh, with respect to the churches and those given from the islands, of course, they must follow social distancing and whatever else, and the protocols. Um, the Christian Council President, um, Bishop Fernanda, has been providing us with drafts of, of their protocols and the way forward. And um, those uh, protocols have been sent to health, and I'm hoping that uh, we can have some tweaking amendments, etc., so at least those so-called sterile islands would be able to commence their um, spiritual healing. Still, the opening of churches could pose some problems, so says senior pastor of Golden Gates World Outreach Ministries, Bishop Ross Davis, who reasons that nowhere in the world can large churches make it with just 10 people. Bishop Davis is referring to the restricted number to which the prime minister has reduced church gatherings in a bit to keep COVID-19 infections at a minimum. 10 persons can do it. 10 persons, not even the ice board. 10 persons, what about the choir? And, this, and, and, and we are used to fellowship. And so when he is, when, when the, when the, when we are given the, when we are given, when we are given, uh, so the the when they're given uh, uh, to not to hold hands or or you know they just cut the church right out because we used to fellowship we used to pray with one another and so that cuts us out right away. Secondly, he says the church needs financing. Where is the finance coming from when everyone is is locked down and there isn't any money, the rest of it? Uh, so we are financially struck. And so there you go again. And so we need funds. And uh, it's not just like it used to be. You, you know, I'm not, I don't know, I don't know. Some people are saying that this is the end. All I know and all I believe is that 